Hello everyone, welcome back to the kitchen table. Tonight on the kitchen table, we're going to be taking a first look at the Phantom 3 Professional. I'm gonna be looking at some of the things that I've immediately noticed that are different and improved perhaps over the Phantom 2. Uh, and also um, my thoughts and some video from the very first flight that I did. I grabbed a bit of a slightly gray and drizzly weather window uh, and got out for an initial flight. Uh, in subsequent videos, I'm gonna drill down a much deeper and look at things like the app in depth and some of the tweaking you can do in that and so on and so forth. But this is just gonna be very much a sort of a first impressions and um, you know, talking about some of the things that I haven't seen particularly discussed. So before we go any further, as is tradition, it's the kitchen table. We have a beverage when we're discussing our drones. Uh, this evening's beverage is this very, very nice Smirnoff Lime vodka, uh, which as you can see by the frosting has come out of my freezer and is um, very, very nice indeed. So um, <clears throat> cheers. Mm. That's for the uh, that's for the subscriber who said uh, on the previous video why I had fruit juice and, and I said there was no vodka in it. And they said that no vodka equals no fun. So let's see how we go. So P3 Professional. Um, yeah. Some initial thoughts um, on things like build quality and uh, you know some of the niggles that we had with the P2 range and, and, and how they've perhaps been addressed. The first thing I have to say that really impresses me is the transmitter. It's, it's heavier, obviously, than the uh, P2 transmitters, um, but that's because it has a bit more in it, including the rechargeable battery. But the plastic is a slightly higher quality. These little rubberized uh, bits on the side and the grips on the back are just very nice touches. The two little rubberized kind of studs on the back there, which mean that when you stand it down, it doesn't kind of go anywhere. That's a nice touch. Um, the, let me just get the antennas up there. All the buttons have really pleasing, positive feel to them, even the ones on the back and the, you know, buttons at the front. Nicely done, nice bits of travel. The sticks themselves, the springs are slightly firmer than those on the P2, although having said that, I don't have a brand new P2 transmitter. All mine have got many, many wiggles in them. So the springs may be looser, but certainly it's just a, a little bit, I don't know, it has a bit more of a kind of a positive feel to it. Um, yeah, um, chunkier. The grips are comfortable. Um, it's probably slightly more comfortable to fly with your thumbs, but if you are a thumb and forefinger fly, uh, flyer, if you just use your, your kind of last two fingers at the back, you can kind of wrap around and, and do it this way. You won't be able to kind of do the wheel of the gimbal quite so easily, but you can use these. If you're gonna use the phantom knobs, that I've reviewed before, then that would make that a bit easier. But this is a, an impressive piece of kit, and it should be bearing in mind the price I've seen that if you drop it and break it, upwards of $600 for a replacement one of these, so please don't. Um, particular shout out to, I think, whoever DJI uses as their industrial design, because this, this uh, clamp here for your phone or gimbal is just a really nice little bit of design. Um, it just works really well. Lovely, look at that, lovely smooth extending action, which means it will fit anything up to the full, oh, yeah. the, the, the uh, I forget which model of iPad it is, I don't own any iPads, but you can fit a nine inch uh, in tablet in there. And I, like, I just like the little touch as well. If you want to use a phone or a phablet, you just flip these little bits open. They've still got a little bit of rubberized padding there. And then you've got You've got a little zone here, which is, it, it, instead of being buried down here, which would have been easier to do, it's kind of up in your eye, eye line still. That's just really nice. Works really well. It's got a reassuring grip and you just feel that you're not gonna lose anything. Impressed. That's really nice. So that, as a first impression when you pull it out, um, it's all nice. Apart from a couple of weird things, um, the logo on the top is facing the wrong way for when you're using it. And so is the printing on the switch here. The PAF is upside down. You would have thought they would have done it the other way. So as you're, but never mind. I don't, who knows? It's a minor thing. <laughs> um, yeah, and as it says, um, of course, we're, we're rocking in here a 6,000 milliamp hour 
LiPo battery giving out 7.4 volts, which explains why the only downside is you can't just charge it from any old source. You have to use the, um, the proprietary power uh, charger that they, they give you, which is they've combined in with the battery charger. It runs off the same thing. You have to use that. It would have been, it would have been great if you could use USB. Um, you know, because then out in the field, the only the only concern I have about this is if you do run out of battery power, I can't just pop the back off and slap in some double A's. Uh, with the old transmitters on the P2 range, of course, you just carried some a spare pack of double uh, double A's, and then you know you were always covered. So that's uh, a little concern. You are going to have to keep an eye out on that. And if you're going out for lengths of time or you're travelling, then you're going to have to carry. Um, you're going to have to carry the, the charger for this and it's going to be difficult to do it in the field without an inverter or something. So that's that's a slight downside, but no, the quality of this, really positive. I'm really liking that a lot. Um, oh, and for those who've mentioned, um, there is still, even with this, there is a, a hole there where you can hang, hang a lanyard or a neck strap and take some of that weight off. After a while, it, does, it will get tiring, so it's probably a good idea. And as I said, Given the replacement cost, I would strap this up like a good one if I were you, because you don't want to drop that and break it. Onto the aircraft itself, as you see, mine is sporting, which has now been tested in the wild on a flight, sporting the clamp and gimbal cover, which works really well. Um, you know, I took it out and uh, it was it was just really easy and gave everything nicely protected. Um, so some things I, I like. It, it's a cleaner look because. There's no exposed kind of compass and all the wiring has been sort of tucked inside. The antennas are tucked away. Um, it's a lot neater. Um, it's broader and taller than the, than the P2. Um, you know, uh, things like the, the compass being kind of hidden down in there. It's just, it's just a slicker feel. The way they've mounted the optical flow system underneath is really neat. There's, there's, you know, it's, it looks as if it was meant to be there. They've even matched you know, they've even matched the same, exactly the same design of the vents on the side. So it kind of looks uh, like a, a ready to go unit, not like something they've just bolted on because it worked with, with the Inspire One. Um, other than that, it's pretty similar. The shell is the same as the as the P2. So the plastics and everything are, are the same, although it has a slightly, it does feel slightly different to me. It feels slightly thicker but that could just because it's new you know compared to the to the to the others i don't know could be um obviously the new batteries are are, are very much you know familiar um one of the things though that you'll notice again inside is there's there's a, a bit more noise uh, in, we've got got a cooling fan in there which is cooling the uh, optical flow system there's a cooling fan in here as well to cool the gimbal unit. Now, I'm not a big fan, <laughs> sorry. I'm not a big fan of fans um, uh, down here. Uh, it's the same reason I wasn't happy with there being a fan in the original Vision camera unit because you know when you start off, you're down here in the dust, all that dust goes up and the fan is only gonna help draw it in through the various things like the SD card slot or the USB port. and. If I was going to be operating this in dusty or damp areas, I would definitely put something down on the ground if I was going to take off from it a piece of board or just a bit of tarpaulin or just something just to try and keep dust um, from getting sort of drawn in with the cooling fans. Um, and yeah, slightly different sort of um, arrangement of the battery shell there, but nothing, nothing radical. Some positive changes that I've noticed, which, well, they're positive in the sense that it stops us from having so many issues, but it's not positive in, in that I think it bodes, it, it bodes poorly for people who want to uh, either easily fi replace things uh, or, or mod. So one of the things that we had problems with, or some people did, was that the screws, particularly the ones in the end of the arms, were both inserted very well talked in at the factory and used a bit of Loctite on there, a little bit of thread lock. Uh, but they also were made really quite soft metal, so and they were Phillips head, unless you had a really high quality, sharp, good quality Phillips screwdriver of the right size, 
it was really easy to just strip those out and you'd be in a world of trouble because you couldn't get them out. They've replaced them with Torx head, the little star cross section bits, which means if you get the right size, and I have had to hunt around in one of my little toolkits, if you get the right size, you should now not have that problem of stripping those, which is good. The other thing they've done though, which is, um, this is the thing that concerns me a little bit, is they've also made the main, uh, the main screws here for opening up the shell, they are also that sort of star torx type cross section. Uh, they're not so easy to get hold of, um, and that explains to me why DJI didn't include, you know, a, um, a spanner or a screw, uh, sorry, a screwdriver or a, or a hex driver in the kit. Um, I'm pretty sure they're saying you don't really have any business going in here, so keep out. Um, needless to say, I am going to open this up for a future video to have a look inside, especially given, bearing in mind they've got rid of the um, the ESCs and the arms. But I don't know this. This seems to say to me that, um, you know, DJI don't expect you to go under the hood of this. Um, so, you know, modders, probably not one for you. I wouldn't have thought this aircraft. That, that just says to me that they, they want to keep people out. Uh, and the other thing is that it could be expensive. So, for example, previously, if you had a bit of a bad landing and you landed upside down and uh, say you cracked the antenna of your GPS unit, then actually you could take the top off, you could buy a replacement GPS unit for under £100, you could pop it in there yourself, and that's fine. Now, the fact that they've made all of these torques, which are kind of used quite often in industrial applications to make it more difficult for your average consumer to get in, I wonder if we're going to see not so many uh, off-the-shelf user-replaceable parts. Pure speculation on my part, it could just be that they've gone for cheapness, they've, they've, they've uh, sorry, not for cheapness, for extra security and to stopping them being stripped. But these were hex heads and I never had a problem with those being stripped before. Um, so you now will need one size of Torx to get, get the main ones up, a different size for these, and the motor mounts are still hex. So it's a bit of a mishmash now. Um, other than that, it's all pretty much business as usual, apart from the fairly tasteless gold stripes which on mine as you can see i haven't had this open uh yet they're, they're a bit badly sort of put on which is a yeah that's already coming up they just look like somebody put them on in the factory and they went oh no actually <laughs> i took them off and tried again yes and the gold badge at the front other than that very familiar but you know as i said it, it's a cleaner look it's looking a bit more dare i say it a bit more apple -y. Um, you know, um, DJI's founder does seem to sort of, you know, want to be the, the, the Apple, the new Apple when it comes to drones and yeah, a lot sleeker, um, but impressive. Um, and this unit's great. So, uh, that's a quick, a quick walk around and a couple of points that I noticed. Um, what I did was manage to go out for not a particularly long flight, um, 13, 14 minutes just to get an initial feel. Um, and so let's have a look at what that was like. So hello, you join me out in the field, literally out in a field in southern Oxfordshire, um, found using the Drone Zones app for safe places and for, to fly your drone and good places to train and have test flights. And I'm going to have a test flight of the um, P3 Pro. Um, so I'm going to hit the record button. Ta-da! We're now recording and I'm going to sort of do a voiceover live of my thoughts of how it's going. Uh, and then you can watch the video. I'm doing it in 1080p because A, I don't have anything that can show 4K or render 4K. And by the time I upload it to YouTube, it'll be mullered anyway. So um, there's plenty of other videos out there about the video quality, but um, we'll see what we're going. So let's do the uh, good old CSC. Oh, little pulse thing going on there. Um, I've um, calibrated the compass and I've updated the firmware, although it actually was up to date out of the box. Um, I've done nothing else. Um, the only other thing I've done is upgraded the app to the latest version on Android, which isn't available on the Play Store. You have to download it direct from DJI's website, and then you get a good version. Uh, the one that I tried was the previous one. It wasn't quite there. So here we go. Let's um, pop it up into a takeoff. Wow. 
First thing to say is the stability. I mean, it's a very calm day. The winds are calm. It's a little bit gray and slightly drizzly. But with those 16 satellites, the thing literally isn't moving across the ground. It's um, quite a phenomenal difference compared to what the Vision Plus would be doing by now. Um, even the uh, vertical height holding, it's literally drifting, I, I would say, two inches at most, and then it's coming back. Very impressive. Let's try the old tricky pirouette. Beautiful. Let's try it the other way. Very slight drift, but no, no wider than the, um, than the width of the aircraft, really. Let's try a fast one. Nailed. Let's try fast the other way. Very, very good. Very good. And currently 18 satellites locked, which is the difference that that GLONASS makes. So let's um, give a bit more height. Let's pop it out over this very attractive field. Let's just uh, tip the camera down. Some poppies in the corner. Right, let's go. Give it a bit of height as it disappears. It's a fast old thing. 30 miles an hour without breaking a sweat. Let's do a nice little banked turn. A bit more height as we come around. Head towards ourselves again. And we'll, I'm gonna let go of the sticks at 32 miles an hour, go. Whee. That's pretty good. I've got to admit, that kills a lot of inertia very quickly. That's impressive. Um, the, the light bridge is on my, I'm running it on a Nexus 7 number 2, a 2013 Nexus 7, and there is a slight stutter um, on it, and I suspect that's probably down to the grunt of the tablet, which is getting on a bit. I must admit, but it's always been pretty good with the other DJI stuff. And I'm going to head off now, just at fairly low height. What am I? 20 feet off the, off the deck. And because it's a grey and overcast day and I've got some... It's quite, making quite a good silhouette. I'm going to go fly off until the aircraft is at the edge of the legal limit for this country, which is beyond visual range. So I'm going to go while I can still see it. We are currently... Mm, 700 feet. Now remember I'm in the lower powered EU version because that's hardwired in now you can't change it. Still see the aircraft perfectly 900 feet away. Got a good signal. A uh, thousand feet and I can still see the aircraft silhouetted against the sky perfectly well. Uh, we're currently 36 feet I just popped it. I can still see the aircraft silhouetted against the sky. Still see the aircraft and I'm going to stop there because it's just about to disappear but I can see it now we're 1250 feet away I have a really nice big preview and I have no issues with control whatsoever. Just going to bring it back. There we go. Just starting to get a bit of break up now at sort of, you know, but it, if I change my antenna orientation to a little bit more vertical, it's fine again. I can see the traffic. So let's bring it on home. I can just see it there. So yeah, range, I think for my purposes, uh, in the EU mode, the CE mode with Lightbridge is gonna be more than enough. Like I said, visual range is all I can do, and that's all I really want. Really, really I'll tell you what, the, 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 the stability with the updated GPS is, it is, I wasn't sure whether the upgrade would be so noticeable, but it is absolutely planted. Absolutely planted. Hello, YouTube. Right, enough of that. Um, the other thing I wanted to test was um, descent. So let's um, let's take it up to I don't know 150 feet or so. Up, 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 up. There we go. There's 100 feet. Have a little pan round. Have a look. The remains of Didcot Power Station there. Half the chimney's gone. Half going soon. Right, let's, um, I'm going to give it full, full down. This is a dangerous moment here because we're in still air, pretty much, very light winds, and I'm just going to go in a classic kind of vortex ring state. 
So we're going to drop it down, straight down full power. Bit of rocking and rolling. You can hear it fighting for the stability as it goes through its own wash. Let go. Wow. Very good arresting of the descent there. Let's try power climb. And stop. It's actually, which is probably useful, it's actually quicker coming down. And stop. Yeah, that's that. That hard braking is quite aggressive, actually. Let's just try a bit of a slew and stop. Way. Come back the other way. Full tilt, maximum tilt, and release. And it hard heals over the other side. That is damn impressive, actually. I have to say, DJI, the combination of the new GPS unit and the new um, sort of slightly more aggressive braking that the ESCs can do means that if you do let go, wow, does it stop. Yeah, I've just done it again there. And uh, let's go full beans. There's the props in shot as ever. And let's just see how far down you need to drop that gimbal to get rid of those. Whoa, too quick. All right, All right full bit, full beans. Hmm. Let's do it again. Go. Pretty reasonable. Pretty reasonable. So I tell you what, in terms of flight performance, um, it's very good. I'm just going to pre press the button on the transmitter to just change the map mode, which I find is a really nice touch. The fact that you could use some of the, those back buttons on the transmitter to change some of the software modes is an excellent, excellent touch. I've now got the map full screen so I can see, you know, my flight path and, and, uh, and everything else. And, and I can have a good close look at my nose direction, all the stuff that you might want to quickly have a reference to. And I've not had to take my eyes off the, uh, off the aircraft to reach down and work out which buttons to press press it again on the back button and I'm back to the full screen view. Very, very nice. Very, very nice indeed. That I like a lot. The, the light bridge is, admittedly I'm low and close in. And I don't, and I think the light, the light bridge is struggling a little bit, but I suspect it's not the light bridge. I suspect it's my tablet um, because I'm not getting any, uh, you know, any warnings about losing signal. It's just, you know, a slight breakup. Uh, occasionally and that may be down to it may be down to the conditions here um, it may be down to the uh, processing power of my tablet but other than that I'm very well impressed very well impressed it's um it's raining again or just starting to so I'll leave you with a um, full speed pirouette to the left which as I'm looking at that aircraft is not moving over the ground in fact let's um let's just do that let's Hello, I do like that quick gimbal. Let's let's pirouette. Now that's pretty stable. Full speed, I haven't let go of it yet. And let go. Boop. Awesome. Anyway, thanks very much and I'll see you soon back at the kitchen table. So there we are. Um, a first look and a first flight. Um, obviously nothing too challenging in those conditions, but I don't think it's unwise to take your first flight in any new aircraft in fairly benign conditions. And if nothing else, it gave me a baseline of the you know phenomenal stability. Next time out, I'll try and pick a slightly more windy day and see what it's like in, uh, in a bit of the rough stuff. But um, yeah, flight wise, very, very good. Um, I think if you're a beginner, I think this is gonna be it's going to blow your socks off. It's incredibly easy to fly. I didn't have it in beginner mode, which kind of just limits you to a certain maximum speed and not too high and not too far away. Um, but yeah, it's it's ridiculously easy to fly and 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 look good. And you saw the um, the way it was able to, you know, uh, bring itself to a halt when you let go of the sticks is very impressive. Um, one thing I noticed in common with a lot of people who are reporting that out of the factory, the gimbal is not sitting straight. You saw in those sort of shots over the fields there, there was a bit of an angle on the, uh, on the video. Um, so that will need a, 
um, an IMU calibration to uh, to sort that out. Um, but other than that, in terms of its actual performance in the air and, and ease of use and everything else, it's it's everything that I think um, I think people had hoped. So very good. Um, that's it really. Uh, what I hope to do over the next of the coming days is going to drill in down into things like the app in a bit more detail. I want to have a look at some of those things for those of us who perhaps are um, you know adding this or upgrading to it from a P2 range. I want to have a look at some of those settings that can be tweaked. A particular sore point for people trying to do nice smooth video was the your um, the your uh, setting on the P2. It was very you know you couldn't you couldn't change the your and it was quite twitchy quite difficult to get very smooth shots there's some parameters that uh, that we can tweak in the app so I'll have a look at those and whether or not they're gonna they're gonna work for people um, and some of that some of the other functions in there uh, I also want to um, get the lid off and let's have a look inside let's have a look at this uh, the, the changes that have been made in hardware as well all that's to come there we go that was it really thank you very much as ever for watching I really appreciate your uh, your support and um, especially to those people who are channel patrons and uh, channel donors who are actually um, helping me to continue to make videos uh, in the vein in this vein and um, if you'd like to join them and support the channel or in some other ways then as ever there'll be a few links down in the description um, I appreciate your company and I will see you again soon back on the kitchen table and until then Cheers.